to the next talk, uh, David Hanauer from the University of Michigan. Uh, David is the Associate Chief of Medical Informatics for the University of Michigan Health System. Um, and he is going to demo a application called Immerse that was, uh, that he developed. It's an open source application. We've actually seen it a, a couple of times um, in the ITB2 um, community meetings uh, to, uh, to be able to integrate interrogate free text EHR data. Um, very interesting, um, interesting approach and I think pretty exciting. So David, let's, let's uh, turn it over to you. Great. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to present at this conference. It's really been fascinating to listen to so far. Let me just figure out how to move my slides here. Okay. So the very first thing I should mention is that if you do want to take notes uh, from anything on these slides, you don't need to because uh, these slides are already online uh, at the link below, and this link will be on pretty much every single slide, so you don't even need to uh, scribble it down right now. So the first thing I should uh, mention here is just to tell you really what Emerse is about. So it's a search engine, kind of like Google, for free text medical record documents. Technically, it's an information retrieval system. It was designed to be simple to use. It was not designed to be the most complex, sophisticated thing ever. And like I2B2, it was designed to be self-serve. So the idea really is that uh, users really without deep technical skills can get into the system and start doing the work without really much effort at all. It's a research tool. It's available at no cost. So it's available under uh, Apache 2.0 licensing. And uh, I should emphasize that picking the right tool for your research is really important. And many times multiple tools are needed. So you usually can't just use a single tool. You have to use uh, several to get your work done. And I'm sure many of you would agree with that. Emerse is for the unstructured data. Uh, and I know that's been discussed a little bit at this meeting, but I think a lot of the focus so far has really been on the structured data. The structured data are things that right now, uh, efforts like I2B2 and uh, 4CE have focused on, things like lab results or demographics or uh, diagnosis code, et cetera. The uh, Emers tool is really meant for the unstructured data, which is sort of the free text notes in the medical record, which can be free form. It can have uh, almost anything in there. It's usually very richly detailed, but very difficult to make sense of, especially for a computer. It has been estimated that about 80% of EHR data are in the unstructured free text. Now, uh, I'm sure that's a debatable figure, but uh, I've never really found anything uh, more uh, reliable than than that, but uh, needless to say, there's a lot of interesting, uh, valuable data that are really locked in the unstructured uh, free text. And I'm not gonna go through these quotes here, but these are from various uh, papers that uh, I've come across where they've actually looked at uh, differences between the free text and what's in the uh, um, uh, structured data to, uh, point out that, that ignoring the free text data can sometimes lead to uh, incorrect uh, results or, or missing data. So I should emphasize uh, what Emerse is not. It is not technically a natural language processing program, at least in the sense that NLP is really considered to be um, kind of really more uh, machine learning these days or um, regular expression based. Uh, but for many different projects, full NLP may not always be needed, uh, and it can really be difficult to use or customize. It can even be difficult trying to decide what the right tool is because you can get different results based on the tool you, that you use. I think the way that I like to think about it is that Emerse is kind of like augmented intelligence. It basically does not do the work automatically for you, but it helps you find things and it helps you as a person uh, make sense of what's in there. And then you as a person still need to look at the context and understand uh, what the information is and, and parse it out the way you want. NLP in generally, generally is more like artificial intelligence where the, the system has been trained in some way and is doing the work automatically for you, but may not understand all the nuance of what's in the documents or, or the kinds of mistakes that often appear there. But like I said, uh, Emerse and NLP are tools and you just need to pick the right tool for the job you have. So they are not necessarily um, competing with each other, they really can complement each other in many ways. So with Emerse, you can do several things. One is that you can find a cohort. You can find a cohort based on things mentioned in the notes. So this could be diseases, drugs, symptoms, really anything that you think is important in the notes. So for example, you can find 
things that don't have a specific ICD-10 ICD code like leiomyosarcoma or some really rare things like brain, Bainbridge Roper syndrome or hundreds of other disorders that don't have a specific code. There's a lot of disorders right now that uh, with ICD-10 are kind of grouped under a single code. And if you really want to narrow it down to the specific disorder, you actually have to look through the text to, to get that. You can work with cohorts in many ways with, e with, uh, with EMERS. So you can find a cohort from within EMERS. Uh, you can upload a list of patients. So if you have some list of medical record numbers from some other research system or some other system, you can just upload that list. Or you could even import it from another system like I2B2. And then uh, it gets saved in EMERS as a patient list. You can have as many lists as you want and up to 100,000 patients per list. It also supports a, um, basically a uh, chart review process for highlighting documents. So this is where you can put in really any kind of terms that you're looking for and it will highlight them within the notes uh, in uh, various colors to help you find things very quickly and easily, sort of like the way I've shown here in this kind of demonstration. It's not a screenshot, but it just kind of shows you what it kind of would look like in the actual system. Chart review has been mentioned in the uh, 4CE Slack channel for validating the structured COVID-19 data. So tools like EMERS really could help with that. Um, it hasn't happened at this point, but it's uh, something that could be, could be used if people were interested. At Michigan, uh, EMERS has been used for COVID-19 related studies. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, review a couple of these just very briefly, but one of them was uh, a chart review looking at various um, presenting symptoms for COVID-19 the interest was to develop a, in a sense, like a database of the symptoms and, and which ones were being, uh, patients were presenting with together so that they might be able to build some sort of predictive app that might uh, be tied later to outcomes uh, in the ICU or, or things like that. But I think it's been discussed already in even this meeting that uh, these things like symptoms are generally not coded and you need some way to go through the free text to pull them out. So it could be an NLP tool or it could be a tool like eMORS where you can enter these terms and, and have it highlighted um, wherever they appear in the, the medical record. We've had other studies, so I'm not gonna get into the details, but one, uh, ocular manifestations in COVID-19 patients, abdominal CT in COVID-19 patients, incidents, indications, and findings. So these are just different studies that are currently ongoing where people have been using eMORS to find various data elements that are in the notes. Uh, as you probably are all aware, when you have free text, there's so much variability in how things can be worded. So this here is a list of different terms, including some spelling errors sort of towards the right of all different ways I've seen uh, COVID uh, mentioned or spelled within either our notes or on uh, news channels or really anywhere on the web. Um, if you're interested in, in downloading this, this uh, set of terms, there's a link on this screen here where you can um, uh, just download it and, and uh, uh, use it for your own purposes if you'd like. EMERS does support uh, query expansion. So this is where you might enter a term on the left like vaping, which probably would only appear in the notes. And it will be able to suggest other terms that uh, are related to vaping like electronic cigarettes, e-cigarettes, including lots of different brands and other things that are related to that. And that is a way that you can expand your search uh, based on really your choice of what you want to include uh, to be as comprehensive as possible. You can use uh, what we call these EMER synonyms, which I'll get to very shortly, or up your, upload your own data set. It could be ICD-10 codes, uh, HPO, uh, MeSH terms. It's a very simple file format, so it's not hard to get your own set of terms into a format you can upload into EMER and then make it available for all the users. The EMER synonyms themselves, uh, this is a manually curated list uh, that I've been developing really over the past 12 years. It has lots of terms and phrases not found in standard vocabularies, taxonomies, ontologies, but things that are found in the clinical notes. Uh, it is, this one is not open source. It's available um, under academic or non-academic licensing from our um, uh, institution, the University of Michigan. And um, I should point out that I am entitled to a portion of the license fees uh, if it does get licensed out. It currently has about uh, 1.1 million unique rows uh, there's links on this page for more details about what it's all about. And uh, if you want to explore a subset just by playing around, there's also a link that you can go to to, uh, to play around and, and look and see how it, it all works. 
some of the things that it has in there, I'm not gonna go through this whole list, but acronyms, abbreviations, uh, lots of different misspellings, trade and generic drug names. Uh, also things that are uh, kind of a little bit more complicated. So these are things that I'm calling root word variations. So things like adenotonsillectomy versus tonsilloadenectomy. Uh, it's kind of really the same thing, but people sort of make up their own words as they go along and just sort of uh, uh, um, invent things uh, on their own. And that also includes really like true neo neolog neologisms like trabecularity, uh, whereas the real word is trabeculation. Emer supports uh, a concept called bundles, which is a safe set of search terms. Uh, these can be shared among users. Uh, it helps standardize searches. And I think this gets at uh, some of the things that have been discussed earlier which is that it actually helps support re reproducibility because you can standardize the way different groups are, are searching on different terms. So some teams have actually published uh, their bundles in the uh, appendix of papers and that is even better for reproducibility because then you know exactly what terms they were using when they were uh, searching through the notes. The kind of things that are in eMERS, well, uh, free text notes. So this would really depend on your own site. Uh, I should emphasize because I didn't mention it yet that eMERS is not a the, the tools available, but the data, just like I2B2, are really located at each individual site. So uh, you would not have access to everybody else's data. Uh, but it, it, in our system, it has admission notes, history and physical notes, path reports, radiology reports, and, and much more. We've got about two and a half million patients, about 170 million notes uh, and growing um, for over the last 20 years or so. Things that are not in EMERS, well, uh, structure data, discrete lab values, vital signs, billing codes, the kind of things that I2B2 is already uh, built to handle. A typical workflow with EMERS would be to uh, identify an initial cohort. It could be using a tool like I2B2, or you could just use EMERS itself with the find patients mode where you just type in the uh, text terms you're looking for. Uh, then you might do additional data abstraction using sort of the uh, chart review part of EMERS. And then you might record your data in a tool like REDCap, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. So EMERS and I2B2, I think really could go together like uh, cookies and milk, that's my analogy. For those of you who are much more sophisticated than myself, you might be wine and cheese. Uh, personally, we'll stick with the cookies and milk though. So things uh, that really could happen someday would be uh, I2B2 queries. Um, uh, I2B2 could query EMERS, which um, uses Solar API which could um, uh, you know, get you, just, just one second, Kira. Okay, sorry. We're at home and my daughter's here. Um, uh, ITB2 uh, could send a patient cohort to EMERS and this actually has um, been done before at Michigan. We have done this uh, where we um, uh, a long time ago actually had an interlink between the two systems. And then um, uh, another thing that could happen sometime in the future is that EMERS could actually query I2B2 to narrow the cohort using structured data. So uh, one thing's been done before, sort of as a proof of concept, but it did work and other things are uh, potentially possible. So back a, a while ago here, we actually had built an I2B2 plugin for EMERS. Uh, just to show you a little bit of how this works, this is actually a pretty old screenshot at this point, but uh, found a cohort within I2B2. I went to, um, the plugins that we had built. So you sort of drag the, uh, um, the EMERS export plugin um, or the, the patient set to that uh, where we had the plugin, uh, we had an export button, and then within a few seconds we could log into EMERS and then that list of patients would appear uh, right uh, in, in EMERS and then you could go uh, further and then start actually searching, searching their notes. Okay, so there's been about 350 publications that have used uh, EMERS. And uh, if you wanna see the full list, you can go to the, um, the link on that page. Uh, it's actually running at, not just at Michigan now, but several other places. So uh, it's currently running at Michigan, the uh, University of Cincinnati, and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And there's uh, several other institutions that are currently working on getting it up and running as well. Uh, it does require local installation. So you do need the support of your IT team. So that's kind of similar to I2B2. In general, it's meant to be a centrally managed resource that users can then log in. It keeps audit trails and it's really a nice way to kind of give access to a large group of people at once. It is EHR agnostic, so it does not matter what EHR you're using, but you do need a way to extract your documents and send them to EMERS for indexing. If you're interested in looking at this further, we do have an online demo 
Uh, we've got multiple videos on our website. We also have a virtual machine that you could uh, use uh, even for some individual projects if you have a relatively small amount of data, just kind of a one-time use. Uh, but it's also where you can kind of get in and look behind the scenes and see how the database works and what the tables look like, et cetera. For those of you who are interested in learning uh, more, I will be giving some live training, sort of like an Immerse 101 session. Uh, this is on June 25th. This is open to really anyone. Uh, you can register at the link there uh, on the screen. There's no cost to it at all. Um, so feel free if you'd like to just learn more. This is really mostly geared towards helping people understand what it's about. So these are kind of more for people who are getting ready to use it for research, uh, but you're welcome to join in. For uh, as much information as uh, you can probably handle, go to our website at project-emers.org. Uh, project and uh, on that website, we have our user guides, we have videos, documentation, and lots of other things, other resources that could be useful. Uh, any specific questions you have, you can just email me. It's my last name, which is Hanauer, H-A-N-A-U-E-R, at umich.edu. And I do uh, definitely want to acknowledge um, all of the uh, groups that have supported this project over the years, including the University of Michigan Rogel Cancer Center, the Michigan Institute for Clinical and Health Research, which is supported by our CTSA, our Health Information and Technology Services uh, team, as well as the NCI Information Technology for Cancer Research, or ITCR uh, group, which has also funded some of our dissemination work. So with that, I don't know how much time is left, but I can certainly take questions if, if there are any. Thank you, David. Yes, we do have some time for questions. So type your question in the question box, chat box, raise your hand, we'll unmute you. Give people a second, just because I. All right, David, I think you've got something in the question box. I don't know. Can you? Oh, is it possible to call emers for batch processing? Uh, I guess it depends on uh, what you're referring to. So, emers is based on uh, solar, the Apache solar system. So, solar itself has an API that you can do lots of large batch things and um, you know, sort of build it into your own pipeline and code. But the, the EMER system itself that sits on top of that is meant for individual users and is not meant for people who, who code. So the answer is if you install EMER, you would have access to the Solar API if your IT team turned it on and allowed you to access it. Um, and then you could do lots of large scale batch processing and, and um, more complex things that the UI would not handle if that answers your question. You got another one, David? Is there another question? Oh, I see, okay. Okay, it does answer it, great. Okay. All right, Any anything else? If not, we will take a break. People ready for a break? I think they probably are. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. That was that, that was absolutely terrific. Um, okay, we will. I'm um, going to take a break now, and we we are going to start back up at 4:05. Um, the net, the last final session will be um, around the the platforms um, and uh, roadmaps for the uh, for the, the foundation. So we will see you back in about 20 minutes.